We begin today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all. be with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So at this point, again, we have um, our chosen son. Nora, you're good. You're here. Um, so I've been telling everybody, and I told I, if there's any kids at home, I've been telling everybody about Charlie coming, right? And so you got you probably haven't seen Alice in a while either. She hasn't been coming out. But what's neat about your role in this, like have you been to baptism? You need to shake your head yes or no. Have you been to yeah, you've been to a baptism. And so you're gonna make like all these promises, like whenever because Charlie's baptism will be here. And so you're gonna get to make all these promises. You're gonna be able to say, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna support him in this, I'm gonna pray for him, I'm gonna help him, you know, in his faith life, you know. And so you're going to be able, you're you're going to be the one that does that, you know, for Charlie. You're going to be the one that does that for for Alice as well. And so that's like the call to everyone, you know. I've been thinking about how many people I've baptized, and we make these promises. And so it's kind of neat, you know, Nora. You get to be the person that brings Alice up in her faith. You get to be the one that brings Charlie up in his faith and gets to show them how to worship and how to be a Christian, you know. So it's really cool. You got a big job on your shoulders, but I think you can do it. So it's neat. And that's what our job is here. Anybody who's been baptized into the church of Christ, we make these promises to, to uphold them, to pray for them, and to help them through their, uh, their life of faith. And so it's a neat thing that we all get to be part of. But Nora, I think you have a special place with Alice. So um, you definitely uh, are going to be there for her uh, whenever she's growing up. So thank you for that. So let's pray, okay? Hey God, thank you so much for sending people like Nora and everyone else in, in this congregation into our lives to help uh, form the faith of everyone here. Lord, continue to be with us uh, while we're at school or play with our friends or our families. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, Nora. Done good. And our first reading from today comes from Amos. Again, if you would like to think about this, 
Um, as we were going through Bible study, it was one of those things where, you know, you say a word of God, word of life, or this is the word of the Lord, and you say, thanks be to God. But again, these are the readings that it seems weird that that is your response. So our first reading is from Amos chapter 5. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone f fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let the justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for that wonderful rendition, Phil. Our second lesson comes from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as, as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together, with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And this is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, 
Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they, were, they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I wanted to begin um, by kind of with an apology, actually. Um, and I'm sure at some point in my ministry, this will be this congregation as well. Um, but I've grown a lot as a pastor, and I know what you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, this is the refined version. But, um, you know, I've grown a lot as a pastor since I started. And um, when I was in Nebraska, this was in, in the last election. Uh, when I was in Nebraska, we all knew that where the polls were going, right? We all knew that the poll that Hillary was going to win, it was just going to be a landslide. And so Nebraska is very, very, very conservative. Like it makes Lancaster look, you know, very, very mild. So uh, Nebraska is just very, very conservative area. So I knew that I was going to have to really care for my congregation in this time, you know, in such a difficult time of, 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 law, of loss. It turned out to be something different, right? You know, um, as we know from history. But I realize now, looking back at when I first started ministry, what I was doing and how I, I did a disservice to my first congregation. And so when I was talking, you know, if anyone's watching on Zoom, uh, I do apologize to my first congregation because I did not set them up well. Because what I realized is that I wanted to make them feel okay, right? You know, I wanted them to make them feel okay that their, their candidate was not going to be elected. And so as much as that seems like it would be a good idea, you know, for a leader, a pastor to try to make people feel okay, that's not what I'm here for. And so I did a disservice to my last congregation that I'm not going to do here, okay? We are here in church. The church has not fallen down. The country is still going. We are still functioning, you know? This is not the end of the world. This is not anything cataclysmic. We are still the church. And that is where I failed to lead my congregation in Nebraska. Is it doesn't matter about the comfort because throughout all this change, throughout COVID, throughout the election, no matter whether your candidate won or lost, whatever it is, God is still God. And so it's a little bit easier actually to preach after this election because I don't need to comfort y'all. I just need to remind y'all and remind myself that the church is still the church no matter who is our president. And that what we are doing is we're bringing healing and that we are bringing this wholeness of the kingdom of God. And so again, yes, it matters. You know, I don't want you to get me wrong. It matters who is our president, right? It matters like in this world, in this kingdom, our earthly kingdom, it matters who is in the office and, and what, what they use. But what we're hearing in our letter from Paul is it doesn't matter. It's saying get over it because it doesn't matter who's our president. It doesn't matter who's in office. It doesn't matter who won or who lost because what matters is God. And so when he was talking in his letter, he was talking to people that were not worried about an election, were not worried about winning or losing or, you know, who had control. But what they were worried about was what happens when you die. You know, the real stuff, right? When you're on that, in, in that place, these politics seem to not mean so much anymore, right? So these people are wondering what happens when you die. And what I've realized more and more is that that is the question, and that's what we need to be, be looking at more than what's going on in our political culture right now. We as a church need to say that death does not get the last word. And not that those are just words that we say to make each other feel better, right? It's not about comforting or making everyone feel better. But this is a promise from God. This is a promise that Christ has given each and every one of us that death does not get the last word. We as the church are supported and we are founded by a God that continually comes after us and will do anything for us. So on the cross, God earned you back. On the cross, God defeated sin, death, and the devil forever. And that's what we are to proclaim to people. 
That's what we as a church, whether we have, whatever, what, whatever president we have in the office that's in the White House, we as a church say death, sin, death, and the devil has not gotten the last word. And so I wanted to know a little bit if you saw this the other day, and, and I talked to you, at least one person, but I thought this was the most amazing thing that I, that, um, I saw imagery-wise. I went out on election day, and if you guys remember, election day was super windy. And as soon as I went out, all the election signs in everyone's yard were just blown away. Biden signs gone, Trump signs gone. And that's what God is going to do. God is coming in and saying, the sinful stuff that is tearing you apart is gone. The wind of God that we talk about, that we hear in scripture, is going to wipe that out and say, this is gone. These things that separate you, these things that are going to show you that, that they have more power over you, these things are going to be gone. Death is going to be no more. And that's what Paul is talking about in his letter. He is telling his people, you need to support each other in this time. You need to encourage each other with these words that death does not get the last word, that God does. That is not just this life that we have to worry about, but it is everlasting life that we get to celebrate and that God has given each and every one of you. And that's what the church needs to get back to. The church doesn't need to be bickering over politics. The church doesn't need to be bickering over things of this earthly kingdom. The church needs to be the church. And we need to rest in the fact that we realize we can't do it on our own. Just look at, look at, the, at where we are now. We can't do it on our own. Humans can't. But what we are celebrating now is that God can and that God will. We as the body of Christ here today, the message that we need is not comfort. I don't care if you're comfortable. I don't care if I'm comfortable. And I'm definitely not comfortable, you know, with baby coming, everything else. This is a stressful time. But as the body of Christ, we are here and we are called to bring forth the kingdom of God. And so where we see division, where we see death, where we see sin, where we see all those things that we know are not of the kingdom of God. We get to usher that in. We get to usher in the kingdom of God. We get to usher in life and life everlasting. We get to usher in life for those who have already died and resurrection. We as the body of Christ get to be the church. So you are called. You are called not to be comfortable. You are called not to worry or not to be upset or be too overly happy about the election. You are called to be the church here and now. And God is bringing healing. God is bringing wholeness. And so you are involved in a very holy ministry at a very important time in this country and in the world where we need to be the church. We need to see healing here. And so that's what's so beautiful, is regardless of who's president, regardless of what disease is going on, regardless of what happens, you are claimed and you are called and you are the body of Christ in this world to bring forth the kingdom of God and to bring forth that healing that is so desperately needed in this body of Christ. Amen.
Let's join together in professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Keep your locks trimmed and burning. Keep your locks trimmed and burning. Keep your locks trimmed and burning. The time is drawing nigh. Keep your locks trimmed and burning. Keep your locks trimmed and burning. Keep your locks trimmed and burning. The time is drawing nigh. Children, don't get weary. Children, don't get weary. Children, don't get weary till your work is done. Children, don't stop praying. Children, don't stop praying. Children, don't stop praying till your work is done. Christian journey soon be over. Christian journey soon be over. Christian journey soon be over. Time is drawing now. Christian journey soon over. Christian journey soon be over. Christian journey soon be over. Time is drawing on. Keep your laps trimmed and burning. Keep your laps trimmed and burning. Keep your laps trimmed and burning. The time is drawing on. Keep your laps trimmed and burning. Keep your laps trimmed and burning. Keep your laps trimmed and burning. The time is drawing now. And again, we are not going to be passing the plates, obviously, um, but they are back there and we are still. Um, taking them at the office, but thank you for uh, continuing the ministries. And again, we uh, just look forward to, again, if you have ideas of where ministry can go, I've been making calls. Uh, that's been the neat part about this is um, visitation has gone down for me, but I've been able to make calls. And so being able to talk with some people, I've been interested in, in what they're into. You know, I realize that I don't really know many of you like really in depth. And so Talking with a few people, I know that there's many that have a heart for benevolence. And so if you have anywhere that you see there's a need in our community, please let us know because ministry is the first thing that we want to be a part of. So let's pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we, what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So a few announcements just before, announcements, just a few uh, words before we, we have our prayers. Um, we want to give thanks, you know, um, Russ is, is doing better. Russ is, is home and hopefully um, just continuing to strengthen. So continued prayers for Russ and Bonnie um, after his heart surgery. 
Um, another one is that um, Alvi um, has, has gone back to the hospital. He had some uh, uh, blood clots in his lungs. So they got him on blood thinners. So keep him uh, in your prayers and Carol as well. Um, but I, I think that, th that he's doing well um, and he's definitely in good hands. So longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer, especially El Don. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Holy Judge, let, us, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have, new, have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. We pray for all those who need healing in heart, mind, or body. Lord, especially we lift up the family of Ruth Keller, for Russ Coral, for Alvy Fetzer, for Pastor Courtney, Joan Appleyard, Sayers family, the Stream family, and Joel Ellis, and all those that are on our hearts as well. Holy protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn, those who have died in the, in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Especially today, we remember Dick. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until the day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So before the benediction, again, I just wanted to say thank you for um, all of your prayers and support in this time. Uh, you know, Pastor Courtney is just a champ. I don't know how she's handling with such grace, but she is truly an inspiration. And, you know, we're both very excited to get Charlie out, but we are both still very scared about it. And so um, prayers for that. He's, he's a giant. So he's been gaining a pound a week, like crazy. So he, he's for a preemie at 35 weeks, he's six pounds, 12 ounces. So it's a very good, very good sign. So continue to pray and we really appreciate it. And during this time of parenting leave, uh, I'm going to be praying for this congregation. So thank you guys very much. But now hear this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed assurance. Glory divine, ever of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed with His own. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Visions 
Thanks be to God.